Good morning. Welcome to worship here at church on and online. I'm Pastor Maria. Pastor Kiri is off today. And thank you to Izzy, one of our high schoolers who's serving as worship assistant this morning. If you are new to Our Saviors, we would love to connect with you. You're invited to fill out a connection card. You can find those in the pew rack in front of you or on the website under Connect. Uh, it's a few announcements to highlight for you today. Lent is here, you'll notice. It's purple season. It is Lent. Um, that means you want to be here on Wednesday nights. Lenten meals are back, so dinner will be served at 5 o'clock. Worship is at 6.30. This year we've got Drawn to the Word videos featuring the Exodus story painted and told by Paul Oman. Details are in the, happen in the announcements. Uh, the women's retreat is less than two weeks away. Holy macaroni. Uh, it'll be right here at church with speaker Rebecca Thurman and a lunch catered by Manzetti's. So details are in the announcements. Sign up on the small group bulletin board um, or online. Preschool registration for fall is open, so spread the word to friends and neighbors. And now is also the time to sign up for Camp WAPO. As it is the first Sunday in Lent, a reminder that we change our sung liturgy uh, for the season. So you'll be fine. Just follow Laura, our song leader. It will, it's like riding a bi bike. It just comes right back to you. But just a heads up that that's happening this morning. Uh, finally, I do have some sad news to share this morning. Some of you may have already heard uh, that Cindy Delmonico passed away yesterday. Um, she was a member here as well as our office administrator for over 20 years, retiring just a few years ago. Um, her service will be here on March 15th, uh, visitation at 2 o'clock, celebration of life at 3 o'clock. So please keep Cindy's husband Steve and their family in your prayers at this time. As we move into worship now, I invite you to please stand as you are able and from your spot, share a word or a wave of peace with everyone around. Please remain standing as Izzy leads us.
The grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we wander in the season of Lent, we are exploring. We seek faith, we seek understanding, we seek you. As we follow Peter's faith story, we see our own. We believe. Help our unbelief. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from Psalms 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. <clears throat> Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in the truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, Remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our gospel this morning is from the gospel according to Luke, the fifth chapter. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long and but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Come thou fount of every blessing To my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mountain fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love Welcome to Lent. In this season leading up to Jesus' death and resurrection, we're going to walk the path in a slightly different way this year. Rather than looking at these Bible stories from 2,000 years ago with an outside eye, we're going to put ourselves in Peter's shoes. If you want to think of the Bible in terms of a play, we are not going to be in the audience this year. This year it's as though we are the understudy for Peter. We're putting ourselves in the middle of the action. We're learning Peter's lines, imagining his motives, and discerning his every move. Why focus on Peter's perspective? Well, other than Jesus, he is the most frequently mentioned person in the Gospels and the whole New Testament. He's there through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. So if we want to get a sense of what it was like to travel with Jesus to watch him heal and hear him teach, to walk alongside Jesus, sharing in his ministry, putting ourselves in Peter's shoes is a good way to do it. So in the coming weeks, we'll be immersing ourselves in scripture and using holy imagination to walk in Peter's shoes. Our sermon series is called Wandering Heart, Figuring Out Faith with Peter. We'll join Simon Peter in his faith story. And as we walk with Peter, we'll look for ourselves in the stepping stones of his story. Our faith stories don't usually go in a straight line, and neither does Peter's. In Peter, we see a person who is both steadfast and unsteady, a dear friend and a betrayer, a follower and a wanderer. In other words, a very normal human being trying to figure it all out just like us. So come along as we join Peter in figuring out faith. We're not idolizing him or vilifying him. We are simply hoping to wander alongside him this Lent, open to what we might learn about Jesus and ourselves by stepping in his shoes. So as we begin this journey, I have to 
uh, quote Tolkien by, and start by saying that not all who wander are lost. I think sometimes we hear wandering connected with faith and we assume it's a bad thing. But it's not. It's not necessarily. When we wander, we're exploring. And when we explore, we discover new things. So as you hear this theme of wandering heart this Lent, I encourage you to hear it as a positive. Yes, sometimes we wander away from God, but not always. Sometimes we wander closer to God. And whenever we wander, we keep moving forward. If you're out on a hike and you stop moving forward, you're no longer wandering. Okay? You have just stopped. <laughs> but when you keep moving, when you seek and pursue, wherever you wander, you're still moving forward. When I was a kid, I spent a lot of Sunday afternoons at my friend Michelle's house. Uh, her family lived at the end of a long road, and their house was up on a ridge. Like many of you probably did, we built forts out of blankets and chairs, uh, eating cheese whiz with cr on crackers and drinking giant glasses of Pepsi in the fort, and then we would head out. We'd take her dog with us, and we would go hiking in the hills among the oak trees and try to get lost. We loved spending the afternoon wandering. We explored. We found a creek. We found plants and bugs. We climbed trees and went through fences. And when it was time to head back, we'd climb to the top of the ridge to get our bearings and head back home. Even though we always wanted to get lost, we never did. <laughs> Most of the time, we didn't need to go to the top of the ridge. It just confirmed what we already knew. We knew where we were. But looking back, those afternoons of wandering and exploring were sacred. We each had a friend along on the journey, a dog who surely knew the way back home, and time to spend exploring God's good creation. Maybe you have memories of wandering that warm your heart the way these memories warm mine. Maybe yours involve a walk or a canoe or a road trip where you didn't plan every inch in advance. Maybe they involve an impulsive side trip you took or a stop to explore a point of interest you weren't expecting to find. Whatever stories of wandering you may have in your past, Bring those experiences with you as we wander with Peter. And if you're someone who doesn't usually wander, I invite you to give yourself permission to do so. If wandering makes you nervous, take a short drive this afternoon, choosing at each intersection which direction to go. Don't decide until you get to the intersection. See what you discover and where you end up. After 30 minutes, or an hour if you're feeling bold, pull out your GPS and find your way home. So we begin to wander with Peter together. Let's start at the very beginning. It is, after all, a very good place to start. Thank you. Some of you are paying attention. Very nice. <laughs> in Luke chapter 4, Jesus teaches in the synagogue in Peter's hometown of Capernaum and casts out a demon there. From the synagogue, he goes to Peter's house, where Peter's mother-in-law is suffering from a fever. Jesus heals her, then he goes on to heal others in town. The next day, Jesus heads out to preach and teach in synagogues in other towns in the region. And then we come to today's reading. So let's put ourselves in Peter's shoes. Not long before, Peter was in the synagogue himself. He heard Jesus teach in the synagogue. He saw him cast out demons, and he even had Jesus in his own home and watched him heal his mother-in-law. He saw his mother-in-law get up after being healed. She jumped up to serve as hostess to their guest. He saw all that. On this day, Peter got up and went fishing. He was a fisherman after all. 
And after coming in from fishing, he was on the shore washing his empty nets when Jesus approached. Jesus hopped in Peter's boat and asked him to push out a little way from the shore. A crowd had gathered, and it would be easier to, to speak to them without getting crushed if he were in a boat just offshore. So Peter jumped in, pushed off, and Jesus taught from the boat, sitting down like a rabbi. So Peter's in the boat with him, hearing the teaching, all of it. When Jesus was done teaching, he told Peter to go out into the deep water and let down his nets for a catch. This is when we find out that Peter had gotten skunked when he went fishing earlier. He tells Jesus, we worked all night long but have caught nothing. But if you say so, I will let down the nets. He's willing to give it a try because Jesus was the one telling him to fish. And that's reasonable, I guess. And he was probably tired, didn't really want to go fishing again, but he had seen Jesus do some amazing things. So it's worth a try. Well, they ended up with so many fish in their net that they had to signal their partners in the other boat to bring their boat to help haul in all the fish. And even with two boats, there were so many fish that the boats were starting to sink. Think about that. How many fish would you have to have in your net for your fishing boat to start to sink? I know a lot of you have fishing boats. That's a lot of fish. That is a ridiculous amount of fish. It's so many fish, it's a little terrifying. Kind of like a plague of locusts, but better because it's fish, right? Peter falls on his knees in the now sinking boat and says to Jesus, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. What's going on? in Peter's mind and heart. Why does he push Jesus away? Is the gift of so many fish too big? Is the gift undeserved, and does that make him uncomfortable? Does the large catch of fish echo stories of God's power over creation that Peter grew up learning in the synagogue? Is it all just too much? What would you have said or done? Peter is obviously freaked out. And it's kind of interesting that we don't hear about him or anybody else freaking out when Jesus heals people or cast out demons. But when Peter catches so many fish that his boat is sinking in the exact same water he fished all night long catching nothing, that pushes him over the edge. Like us, Peter is trying to figure it out. He heard Jesus teach and saw him heal and didn't freak out. He was willing to go back to the deep water to let down his nets. He was willing to take that wandering step when Jesus told him to. And now, with this unnaturally large catch of fish, a new understanding seems to have kicked in. Jesus isn't just from God. If there are this many fish, it's because the power of God is in Jesus in a way Peter never imagined before. What does this mean about who Jesus is? While Peter is panicking and trying to think through what's going on, Jesus says to him, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be catching people. And when they get back to shore, Peter and his fellow fishermen leave everything and follow Jesus. Peter is overwhelmed by the holy power that Jesus clearly has. He knows he's sinful, so he pushes Jesus away. But Jesus' response is to say, don't be afraid. I came for sinful people. I came for imperfect people. You are the one I seek. In fact, you are exactly the kind of person I want alongside me in my ministry. Imperfect, 
is perfect for the job. Can you imagine? Peter left everything and followed. Left his wife, his mother-in-law, his fishing business. He wasn't entirely sure who this Jesus was yet, but he knew that the power of God was at work in him like nothing he had ever seen. And that was enough for Peter to take the next step, to go with Jesus to find out more, to keep seeking understanding, to keep figuring out faith. For Peter, this is just the beginning. For us in this Lenten season, this is just the beginning. On Wednesday nights, we'll see God's power at work in the Exodus story, painted by Paul Oman. On Sunday mornings, we'll wander alongside Peter, putting ourselves in his shoes, looking for connections between his faith story and ours. Today, ponder who Jesus is. With what Peter experienced, who is this Jesus? Would you leave everything to follow him? With what you've experienced in your own faith wanderings, who is Jesus? When has he called you to follow? Did you push him away at first like Peter? And what might Jesus be calling you to now? Ponder, reflect, and rest in the fact that like Peter, Jesus seeks you out, just as you are. He calls you by name, inviting you to follow, to keep seeking understanding, to keep figuring out faith. Take time today to let your heart wander, as together we begin figuring out faith with Peter. Amen. stand as you are able and join me in the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Invited by our God who seeks after us, we turn our hearts, our minds, and our spirits toward God in a time of prayer. Lord, as we figure out faith with Peter, you invite us to wander. You comfort us, saying, do not be afraid. You join us in life's deep waters. You invite us, saying, follow me. You seek after us, imperfect as we are. Thank you for being a God of boundless mercy who calls us by name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our maker, you remember your covenant with the earth and its inhabitants. Rescue communities and creatures hurting from natural disasters. Preserve species and habitats endangered by human disregard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our light, you know our weakness. Free all who govern from the temptations of power. Sustain all who work for human rights in every nation. Bring peace to your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our help, you care for your beloved children. Feed hungry people living in food deserts. Comfort all who are afraid, in despair, in pain, or in the need of your healing. We name before you Ardell, Sam, Karen, Randy, Eddie, Joe, Carolyn, Bruce, Al, Pauline, Brittany, Lynn, David, Javita, and Pat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope, you promise eternal life to your beloved children. Comfort those who mourn today, especially Steve Jorgensen at the death of his wife, Cindy Delmonico. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you join us in the deep waters of life. Hear all of our prayers, spoken and unspoken. We release them to you, trusting in your goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Well, as you see up on the screen, Ash Wednesday was last week. Lent has begun. Uh, we added a midweek a midday service for Ash Wednesday this year. We had meals at lunchtime and in the evening. It was really a fantastic day. It was um, great to have everybody together. So just a reminder, Wednesdays in Lent, 5 o'clock dinner, 6.30 worship with Paul Omen's Drawn to the Word videos of the Exodus story. Your offerings make all of this possible. Reminder, there are many ways to give. You can um, place offering in the baskets on the stands on the way out. Mail in a check, use the QR code on the screen, or give through the website. Let's pray. God of abundance, we thank you for the gifts you give. Gather the gifts we return to you and use them to spread your goodness and love to all people. Jesus was always telling the left out and the ignored, the hurting and the hungry, the sick and the hopeful, I have a seat saved for you. That is why we come to this table 2,000 years later. We come to remember. We come hungry. We come seeking a taste of your kingdom. Meet us here, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
you call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We remember him as we pray the prayer he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to receive communion here at Our Saviors. If you're coming forward for communion, you'll see when the servers are ready at the front of your section. When you see that they are in place, that is your cue to start coming forward. People in the front first, all the way to the people in the back. Uh, center sections, you'll come up the center aisle and back by the side aisle. Side sections, you'll come up along the wall and back by the side aisle. Um, as you come forward and you reach your station, simply hold out your hand. We'll drop a wafer into your hand. Take that wafer, move to the next server, and dip your wafer into the chalice. The large section is red, and that is wine. The small section has white grape juice. After you've dipped your wafer, you may then eat it and return to your seat. If you need gluten-free wafers, those are available on the stands at the front of each section. More gluten-free info is on the front of your weekly announcements. Uh, if you have someone with you who doesn't take communion, please bring them forward for a blessing. Um, I think that's the stuff you need to know. So for those communing in place or at home, hear these words. The body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. I invite the communion servers forward.
please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of grace, in the, the bread and wine you have met us here. You have fed our souls. You have fanned the flames of our faith. You have invited us to step out of our boats. Like Peter, use us to care for those in need, to tell your story, and to build a better world. Amen. Beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, and to speak of your faith. You are called. You are blessed. In both your ups and downs, you always belong to God. Amen. Figure out faith as you wander. We, we will. will. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.